Hello, I'm Wells. I'm a third year medical student of the University of Abado. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about our 15 highly repeated topics in germ biology. I said this in the physics and chemistry version of this video that every single topic you'll be tested on in your actual exam are from the jam syllabus. For biology jam syllabus, it is divided into five sections, and each five section has topics under it. Altogether, there is a total of 23 topics. So if you are aiming to score very high in biology, you need to learn almost all of those 23 topics. But if you feel you are pressed on time, you find it difficult to understand all those topics, then you should keep watching this video because I'm going to be talking about 15 highly repeated topics, how those topics are related to one another and also how you can easily understand them. So let's get into the video. The first topic is living organisms. In living organisms, you should learn cells, cell organelle and level of organization of life. You should know the difference between plant and animal cell and for each type of cell you should know the organelles they have and their function. You should also learn the level of organization of life. There are some organisms that are existing at cell level, some are existing at tissue level, some are existing at organ and some they are the complete organism with systems. I've seen questions they will ask you Chlamydomonas is at what level of organization of life? Sponges is at what level? Hydra is at what level? Onion bob is at what level? So you should know the organism that exists at each level of organization of life. This could be a bonus mark for you. The next topic is classification of living things. This is very very important topic and it's impossible for you not to get questions from this topic because classification of living things is covering a whole lot of organisms together in the same topic like classifying them and they don't just classify them they tell us the properties of each organism in the classification and you're going to be studying the characteristics of this organism later so it always seems like a lot of questions are coming out from this topic and it is very important you know this topic there's a little problem about this topic the problem is that it is quite volatile and easy to forget because you just have different different names in a bit, I'm going to be giving you two methods you can use to keep this information in your head and not forget it before your exam. But before then, let's keep talking about the classification. So, in the classification of living things, we have the five kingdom. You know, you should know all the hierarchy of classification, kingdom, phylum, class, other family, genus, species. For the kingdom, you should know the five kingdoms. And not just that, very, very importantly, you should be able to see the gradation in properties as you are moving from the kingdom upward. For example, the monerans, which are the simplest living organisms, are prokaryotes and others above monerans, they are eukaryotes. As I also going up the kingdom, the complexity of those organisms increase. The way they carry out different characteristics of life increase. For example, in the simple organism, they can just do gaseous exchange by diffusion, but higher up, the animals, they need a complex, sophisticated um, organs to carry out those processes so you should be able to see this gradation another important thing to do is to know the major phylum under each kingdom and very very importantly you should also know the general feature of the organism in that phylum and the organisms in that phylum for example in kingdom protista we have two major phylum protophyta and protozoa so you should know the organism that belong to the protophyta. Their general characteristics is like they are like plants. They behave like plants. Most of them have chlorophyll. And the protozoa, they are kind of animal-like. And you should know the organism in the two different phylum. The protophyta, we have Chlamydomonas, for example. And in the protozoa, we have amoeba, paramecium, and many of those disease-causing organisms. Learn most of the organism under the phylum, under each kingdom. That said, now let's talk about how you can remember all those things. The first way is to use past questions. If you've always watched my video, you would have noticed I like emphasizing on using past questions because past question is genuinely useful. So I found this cool jam app, which I think is going to be very helpful for you. Unlike many other jam apps, this one is completely free to use. It has detailed explanation to questions. You can easily track your progress because it records your performance anytime you use it. And the coolest thing like about the app is you can decide to solve questions only from a particular topic let's say you just read reproductive system you can decide to solve only questions from reproductive system to test yourself and you can do the correction immediately so click the link in the description below to download the app class 54 on play store 
for free thanks to class 54 for kindly sponsoring this video now the second way of remembering is by using something called mind mapping mind mapping means writing a particular idea and connecting it with other ideas for example in the classification of life you write the five different kingdoms under the five different kingdom you will link it to the main phylum under that kingdom under the phylum you will link it to the organisms under the phylum so at the end of the day you are going to be having most of the important information on a single piece of paper you can always go back to check and link everything together the next topic is nutrition under nutrition you should know the mode of nutrition autotrophic and heterotrophic and under the autotrophic you should know the two types of mode the photosynthetic or holophytic you should also know the chemosynthetic and importantly you should know organisms that perform the chemosynthetic mode of nutrition and organisms that perform the photosynthetic you should also know that it is not just plants that perform photosynthesis there are other microorganisms as far as they possess chlorophyll can also manufacture food using the sunlight in heterotrophic mode you should also know the different types under it like holozoic parasynthetic saprophytic you should also learn about mode of feeding filter feeders piercing and sucking and all all of those stuff because questions come out from them another thing under nutrition is to learn plant and animal nutrition in plant nutrition the basic thing to focus on is photosynthesis and the process of photosynthesis the light and dark stage and very importantly the product that is produced from photosynthesis the condition that are required for photosynthesis to take place and there's this experiment in your book don't ignore it that they could maybe paste a black paper on a leaf just to show the effect of sunlight on photosynthesis or they could remove a leaf from the tree boil it in water put it in alcohol put iodine if you know what each of these steps mean why they are doing each of the steps the burning of the water is it to weaken the leaf or to kill the cells of the leaf or to decolorize it you should know exactly what it is because i've seen questions on that too for animal nutrition you should know classes of food and food tests now the next few topics are system and in my opinion they are easy to understand and interesting so you should take advantage of all those topics and learn them well topic number four is transport system in transport system you should understand concepts like surface area to volume ratio microorganisms have like surface area to volume ratio you should understand transporting plant and transporting animal you should know the material for transport the medium for transport and when you're talking about the medium for transport in animals it is blood and lymph in plant it is sap for blood you should know the component of blood the cells in blood the plasma and how many percent all the sticks you should also know the circulatory system you know things like open and closed circulation pulmonary and systemic circulation you should see the gradation in characteristics you should see how things are moving up for example the art in fish is different from that in amphibians it's different from that in mammals and it is increasing progressively that way you should learn all those things you should also understand the chambers of the heart in plant transport you should learn translocation and transpiration the next topic is respiration so we have internal and external respiration internal respiration is the one happening at the cellular level so in internal respiration you should learn aerobic and anaerobic respiration learn the equation of respiration how glucose is being broken down in presence of or absence of oxygen now for external respiration learn how gaseous exchange is taking place and see how it is the gaseous exchange organs in organisms how we change and increase in complexity now the next topic is excretory system so you should understand what excretion is and why excretion is taking place I'll try to answer this question if you chose water you are wrong because water is an excretory product the correct answer is feces physics is not an excretory product it is an ingested product i know quite a number of students feel this particular question that's why i'm asking you make sure you know what excretory products are and know the various excretory products and know where those excretory products are from for example you could see a question urea is produced by the kidney or the liver the next topic is properties and function of cells this is like continuation of the topic i already talked about the number one topic specifically under this place you should learn growth in plant and animal in plants you know growth is not uniform it is usually at the apex learn the hormones that can affect growth when you be hearing kinin and gibberellin or something like that also very importantly you should learn the cell response to its environment for example if an atom is moving away from light what kind of response is that that is negative photo 
taxism negative because it is moving away from the stimulus photo because the stimulus is light taxism because the whole organism the whole earthworm itself is moving away from the light so you should know the nastism then the tropism if you touch a leaf sunflower whatever plant and it closes what kind of response to stimulus is that learn that the next topic is supporting system and movement this one is basically skeleton you learn hydroskeleton endoskeleton and exoskeleton and know the organisms that have them you should also learn the supporting system in plants what makes plants rigid the next topic is digestive system so in digestive system you should learn how different organisms absorb nutrition from external source some use diffusion some use some have complex digestive system okay look at this in a question i saw it says the soccer of tapeworm is for what i know many students will just think oh soccer soccer for sucking then it is for feeding that is wrong because the soccer is not for feeding tapeworm uses the whole body surface to absorb nutrition not the soccer but the common organism learn their digestive tract and for my mouse you should learn how to go from your mouth to the toilet you should learn the digestive enzyme that acts on the food in your mouth as you swallow the food through the esophagus when it gets to your stomach what enzymes are acting on what food the next topic is reproductive system don't forget to learn asexual reproduction you talk about body conjugation binary fusion and so on and make sure you know the organisms that are performing different kind of asexual reproduction so for sexual reproduction learn the sexual organs i mean the sex organs the testes what are the components of testes in the female reproductive system then the ovary the uterus the oviducts all those basic stuffs the next topic is nervous coordination and sensory organ so in this topic you should learn the cns the pns the autonomic nervous system somatic nervous system and the sensory organ very important learn the eye and the ear learn the structures of the eye the sensitive part of the eye and defects of the eyes astigmatism short-sightedness and so on for the ear you should learn the parts of ear as you learn this i think it's also important to just learn homeostasis at the same time because there's a connection between the two topics the next topic is ecology and to be honest ecology is not a single topic in the jam syllabus it is a section that has like seven other topics in it but it's almost impossible for you not to see questions on ecology so i advise to read as many of those ecology topics as you can but let me highlight some that are not so difficult to read and are also always repeated so you should learn the basic ecology concept know what ecosystem habitat niche environment biosphere all those things know what exactly they are because they can give you a definition and give you options that might be confusing if you understand it very well it becomes easy for you to pick the correct answer learn the functioning ecosystem learn food web food chain pyramid of number how organisms are related to one another in the ecosystem learn biological association this is also very important biological association like mutualism commensalism parasitism and so on and very importantly know the organisms that are performing the specific kind of association you could see questions like bacteria in the intestine of man is for is what kind of relationship is that um shark and remora fish what kind of relationship is that another thing to learn under ecology is population studies the next topic is variation in variation we have morphological and physiological variation you should know examples of each kind and why the variation is even happening in the first place you should also know things like blood grouping if a person of blood group o donates blood to a recipient of blood group a what is going to happen is there going to be agglutination or not and why the next topic is adaptation adaptation is super important too in adaptation you should learn competition the types of competition you should learn how the part of different organisms are modified for the environment they are living in and how they are modified for their survival for example organisms that live in the desert they have different characteristics that makes it possible for them to survive in such dry condition and if you take a leaf a plant from the normal grassland and plant it in desert it won't survive because it doesn't have features for storing water learn all the organism and the modification birds for example there are different kind of birds some are predators 
and their beak and their claws are modified to, to like fit their mode of living so on the adaptation learn adaptive coloration mimicry camouflaging and some behavioral adaptation and the last topic is heredity and genetics in this you should learn understand how to cross traits understand the mendel's law of genetics and that's all but i would suggest to read one more topic if you have the time theory of evolution this is also charles darwin and jean lamarck's theory learn them it is not that hard and it can be repeated <sighs> and that's the end of the video i hope you found it helpful make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet also share this video with your friend who you feel might find it helpful